Hey everybody, after releasing several videos with starter projects that included temperature sensors, I've been getting some feedback about a sensor, the BME 280, as it would compare to the DHT 22, the one that I employ in my videos. And here on the left is the BME 280, and on the right is the DHT 22 that we've seen in my videos. And I've been asked to compare the two, and I found the results rather interesting. I wanted to share it with you in a video, so let's get started picked up the DHT22 on Banggood 3 for 1385. It's already mounted onto a circuit board. It does require a capacitor and a resistor to function properly, and they're already on that board. The BME 280s I picked up 3 for 1399 from Amazon. It comes with the headers, but they're not soldered onto the board. Check on Amazon shows the DHT22 for 3 to be around the same price for a slightly lower quality variant, but we'll say roughly the same price. We'll go over some quick comparisons before we get started. The DHT22 purports to use 2.5 milliamps during the data request. Also has an accuracy of 0.5 degrees centigrade and allows for polling only once every two seconds. The current for the BME280 is in microamps depending on what it's reading, 340 for humidity, 714 for pressure, and 350 for temperature. This device is also plus or minus half a degree at 25 degrees Celsius plus or minus one at zero to 65, and has a resolution of a hundredth. Furthermore, it could handle multiple requests per second. So I'll remove one from the package so we could solder the pins on properly. We can see how it arrives. It's got several pins more than we need, and that's just fine. We want to keep the sensor on top. We can see the sensors in that little square box. Run the pins through like this mounted in the vise. Take a moment to apply flux to all the pins. And I'll just be soldering the first pin as I use my finger to try and canter the board up so I get a 90 degree angle between the board and the pins. This looks a bit shallow so I'm going to have to heat up the pin again and readjust it with my finger until I get it to 90 degrees. And that looks a lot better. So now I'll solder the other pins. And then we'll take a final look. There we go. And from the side, perfect 90 degrees. We'll pop it out of the vise. Give it one last look over. And then we'll clip off the extra pins. And we're done. Ready to put it in our project. And just like with the temperature project, we're going to use a TTGO T display along with a DHT22. We'll add ground, five volts, and data on GPIO 17. This will be followed by the BME280, again tying off ground, three volt power, SDA to GPIO 21, and SCL to GPIO 22. This completes the wiring for this project. Ensure to carefully check all of your wiring before proceeding, especially your voltages. For the BME280, I've chosen the uh, Adafruit BME280 library. It seems to be one of the more popular libraries that's used for this implementation. It did come with some examples that we're going to employ with this testing using I2C. I'll point out a couple things in this library. Number one, they are using a constant that does show the barometric pressure in uh, hectopascals, 1013.25 uh, sea level. Another thing is hexadecimal address 77 may in fact be wrong on some devices this requires a manual change there are two such possibilities as we will see so these are pointed out especially for connectivity purposes and i've incorporated that along with the unified sensor library into my live depths this file will also be included in a link provided in the comments below and this is just a copy off of my original DHT22 test program, which I've modified to incorporate the Adafruit BME280 library within it as well. As far as defining, this is still all of the original definitions with the exception of this added definition for sea level pressure. And then I've added uh, the BME280 as BME. I removed function that wasn't needed for the purpose of this program and added new function for BME280 that would allow for it to print in tandem onto the screen for the TT Go so we could see that the temperature and humidity are printed alongside each other or top and bottom 
of each other so we could see how close they are or how far off they are. There are some certain scenarios that we're going to have to look at. It's not just as cut and dry as taking a look at the screen and seeing what they are. We'll get into that shortly. But I also wanted to point out, for lack of room, I simply took the temperature, the pressure, and the altitude that we also get from our new sensor and shifted it directly to the terminal, allowing us to view those values and run some extra tests on that. Everything else in the program is pretty much the same. We're not using screen two. Some code for detecting if the button was pressed. Some startup code in setup. This is important again. I did switch mine to hexadecimal address 76 because 77 did not work. It's just not what my particular device was configured for. And within the loop, I do maintain this one second delay here in support of the DHT22. That's the extent of the program. We're going to run it now and see what we get. If you're building this in Arduino IDE, you're going to need to install the DHT sensor library by searching for DHT22. The Adafruit BME280 library. This has dependencies which will require installation as well. As well as the Adafruit Unified Sensor that may have been installed as a dependency of the BME280 library. Compiled and then executed. Put a plastic bag over the sensors so that the fan or air conditioner wouldn't directly affect it. And I wanted to do a plug-in test to see if there was an effect on any internal heating of the components. Running it at a full half an hour. I set this over to Celsius. And this is 30 minutes. Noticing that the BME280 was running erratic, or appeared to run erratic. It wasn't stabilizing like the DHC22. And granted, the DHC22 only runs in tenths of a unit where the BME280 runs in hundreds of a unit. But still, I thought it would require some closer investigation. When I looked at the FLIR, I realized that this setup is probably not ideal because there was heat radiating off of the ESP32, albeit very slight, but enough that might skew the results. So I added extensions onto the sensors to move it away from the ESP32, solving for that heat issue. My only other problem is I can't seem to find anything that reads the same temperature. This one showing 25.8, FLIR showing 28, and then I got these two sensors, and they're showing around 26 and change. To increase the accuracy, I've added another BME280 to the mix here on a separate TTGO. This one here on the bottom, it does not have a DHT22. I didn't have a spare, but we could see that it's off by about, what, 0 0.05 degrees Celsius, and just about a little less than 0.25% humidity. So they're very close to each other. Obviously, both of them are in that box in the same exact environment. We're seeing very little difference in temperature and humidity from this top one here to the bottom one here. So I have to imagine if the temperatures are not correct, these two are definitely calibrated to very close value to each other. So I'm gonna run the cold start test one last time now with both of them. These have been shut off for several hours. So as we're turning them on, I'm gonna set both of them for centigrade and we're gonna watch them over the course of half an hour. So we zoom in. And the reason that I'm doing this test is there are folks that were wondering if there was some sort of internal heater in the sensor that heated up and changed the temperature over time as it stabilized. So that's why I'm running them cold and letting them warm up over the course of half an hour. There was almost zero drift between the two in temperature and a negligible drift between the two in humidity. If we look at the drift across all three devices, we can see that it's just about exactly the same, and that could account for the change in temperature of the room over the course of 30 minutes. Just to check the pressure sensor, I'm running the first one against my iPad's pressure sensor and I'm seeing a difference of about two hectopascals. It's very little difference. We're going to try the other one now. And the second one only deviated from the first one by a tenth of a hectopascal. So very little deviation between these two sensors. Obviously the other temperature sensor doesn't have pressure sensing, but I wanted to compare these two against the iPad. So we've learned that compared to the DHT22 for comparatively the same price, at a third the size, offering greater resolution and less power consumption, along with a pressure feature, as well as significantly less time between polling. 
the BME 280 is a clear winner and doesn't appear to have any of the drift problems that have been raised as a concern on startup. And that concludes the BME 280 versus the DHT 22. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. Click that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Click that subscribe button for more videos when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?